So your book, Trusting the Dawn, How to Choose Freedom and Joy After Trauma. I think it is an amazing resource because you really break down the things that you tried and why they were beneficial, why they work. Um, and it's just a great resource for anybody who's kind of lost or stuck on their journey of healing trauma. Um, so why don't you start by kind of just telling us about the experience um, in Montecito, that story. Sure. So we yeah. know what we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, so as you mentioned, I'd had you know, some sexual assault trauma in childhood, which did start me on this journey of getting my master's degree in clinical psych and leading these retreats for women. It was always a passion of mine to heal and to share that with other people. And then in January 2018, we had just moved into this new 1890s farmhouse. So it was new to me, 1890s <laughs> farmhouse in Montecito. It was in the best public school district up there. Oprah was our neighbor. It was very bucolic and perfect seeming. And the Thomas fire had been raging that 2017. So we'd been evacuated multiple times. We still hadn't moved into this house. We'd been doing all this work on it. And we moved back in in January, and they had called for a potential debris flow. But I think being from the East Coast, I really did not understand what that means. Um, and we were not in the evacuation zone. So it was our fourth night ever sleeping in this house. And I had my then husband put like, I'm like, well, maybe there might be some leaking under the door. So I like, put up some like, you know, boxes or something. Cut to 4 a.m. for no reason that I'm aware of. I woke up and we hadn't put curtains into the, the bedroom yet so I could see the bedroom face the mountain. And it was literally like a tsunami of mud, like 30 feet high, just like coming at us fast so I screamed go get ever our son he, his bedroom was upstairs and by the time Napper my then husband had run to go get him I couldn't even follow him because the whole wall had crushed in and there was mud and glass and debris like up to my waist so I ran the other direction to my bathroom and literally watched, I don't know if you saw that Naomi Watts tsunami movie, mm. but that's yes. what it felt like. Um, I saw, you know, a house on my left just get like sailing down the hill. On my right, there was my two-story house, the living room, and then the bedroom, my child's bedroom, ripped off, spun around backwards going down the hill, and I thought that he was in it. Um, mm. So... I wound up being trapped on my bathroom counter for five hours. The mud miraculously stopped like an inch below the counter. And I couldn't hear anything because a mudslide is very loud. Boulders, cars, houses, tumbling. Um, and finally, about like an hour and a half later, I could hear them and I knew they were alive. So that was incredible. Mm. But that night, like sitting there in the dark, I definitely, there was another presence with me. Um, I felt, I know you've talked about like near-death experiences and it was, there was something else. I don't know how to describe it. I always believed in God and angels, but I really felt a presence with me that night. And just when I look back, like all of the things that lined up and how they lined up, like if seconds had been mm -hmm. off. If you hadn't woken up. If I hadn't have woken up, if I hadn't have screamed, if he hadn't have gotten there, if there hadn't have been a huge gas explosion that had lit up the sky so I could see the mud, there was just so many things that I um, am just forever grateful for. Mm -hmm. And then I was rescued the next morning actually by a civilian named Orion. Which I just think is like out of a fairy tale. I love the way you describe it in the book. Yeah, he just came like charging in in his waders and I'd seen like the fire department had been rescuing other people off of their roofs and I didn't think they didn't see me. So he came through, figure out how to get me out of there and put me on the back of a firefighter. But now my daughter, who I was pregnant with at the time, her middle name is Orion. Oh. And we actually, he just checked in with me yesterday. Like we still stay in touch and wow. yeah. True hero. True hero, Orion Womack. 
<laughs> or a true hero. <laughs> Another shout out. Um, but yeah, and you, you can speak about it now without, you know, as many triggers. Um, but yeah. afterwards, I mean, the nightmares and the sleep uh, kind of describe what you were dealing with that you've had to overcome and how long it took you, you know, to really come back down to earth and, and feel like you were able to have a normal night and not fear, you know, any sort of weather pattern coming your way. Yeah. You know, I think it's something that I've been talking more about now, several years later, and just kind of realizing, like, I don't know, for you, I feel like for a lot of people, it's like healing. It's not like heal, check, done. You know, I feel like it's just this like layered experience. But um, right after the mudslide, I I also was coated in poison oak because there was poison oak in the mud. So if the nightmares didn't wake me up, then I, I mean, I had this like all over my body oh my <laughs> would God. wake me up. Um, so I went, what did I do first? I did cranial sacral. I think for a lot of people that have experienced, especially like a really physical trauma, being able to just lie there and not talk for me was really a gift. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was my first step and then EMDR actually that was that stopped my nightmares um and that's eye movement desensitization reprocessing therapy (laughs) I know it's a mouthful (laughs) and it mimics it's basically just like bilateral stimulation so therapists can do it by either um you you can hold little nodes that buzz right left right left Um, You can tap even. There's a really good book, um, Dr. Laurel Parnell, called the, I think, what does she call it? It's like the tapping effect or something like that. But um, it's stimulating the different hemispheres of the brain. And while you're talking about it, it kind of literally undoes the, the loop, the wiring. So the first time you tell the story, I was like sobbing. I was really triggered. It was hard for me to get it out. The second time it was still really triggering, but each time I told the story, it lessened the desensitized. Yeah, and kind of re- helped to reset my neural pathways and the parasympathetic response in my body. So those two modalities were really helpful right out of the gate. Um, but you know, just having my master's in psychology and having this background and still not really recognize it sounds ridiculous now. I wasn't recognizing that what I was going through was PTSD mm. at all. <laughs> yeah. Is like, yeah, but okay. it's, I mean, that's the whole thing. Like we can, especially yeah. you get training to help others, but we have blind spots, which is why, you know, I think it's the way God designed us or energy designed us because we're meant to be in community, right? Yes. We're not meant to heal in isolation. No. Um, so we have blind spots so we can seek out. I mean, we ultimately are all our own self healers, but sometimes we need people to reflect back to us because we have blind spots. Absolutely. Or we're just so trained to like, I got it. I got it. You know? And it's like, no. So now I've even like some of my friends who I love so much and are so smart. But, you know, it's like anxiety, stress, trouble sleeping, digestion issues. These can all be signs and symptoms that there's something else to look at. Right. And it's okay to look at it. Like, let's look at it. Because that's another thing. If we don't look at it, at it it's going to still come out. It's, yeah. I just rather look at it and <laughs> right. help it out in the way that I would like for it to come out. Yes, totally. Um, I love, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything else about the actual event that was important. Um, I mean, you you still live in Montecito, correct? Well, I actually moved downtown. Okay. <laughs> so I live maybe like seven minutes from Montecito. Because I imagine it would be hard to go back up on the hill. I don't know. It still is. You know, it's kind of amazing how quickly, I mean, that was only five years ago, they've rebuilt in that area. Um, there have been mudslides in Montecito over the years, like every 20 years. And they've said there'll be another one in 20 years. But so that, to me, like, that's something I've had to let go of. Like, people choose their own path. Like, you know you're buying a house in the red zone. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I live downtown. Yeah. <laughs> I live near the Mission, <laughs> the Mission in Santa Barbara, which actually, you know, that it was, the Mission was put there because it is a very safe place. Mm. Um, 
I have heard that the Chumash Indians used Montecito as a burial ground back in the day. So I'm not going to say anything about what that might mean, but I'm just like, I'm just going to live downtown. Montecito is gorgeous, and it is still hard for me to go. Um, So that probably means that there's more work for me to do, Kelly. (laughs) (laughs) Until, I mean, there's always work to be done. There is, Layer upon layer upon layer. Thank you for listening to The Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gore. Thank you so much and be well.